What's up? What's up? Guys, I'm so excited because I haven't been to church since March. This is my first time being in church, right? Uh, so this is really exciting that I was looking, I was so, I couldn't wait to come up on stage because it's been a while since I've been preaching to people. You know, I, well, I've been preaching to people, yes, but on the other side of the screen, yeah? So this is the first time that I'm on, 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 on a pulpit and I've really missed being on this pulpit. I've missed it, man. I've been here before. I came here once before by the invitation of uh, Chichi over there. I came for your worship uh, service, which was excellent. I also came here for a service and I was so blown away. One of the things that really stood out to me about this church, this is a very intimate church. And anytime there's intimacy, you know that the Lord is not, uh, uh, he's, he's around here. And I remember even some of the things that you guys did are things that I took back to Nairobi Chapel South. And I was like, guys, we have to do this thing like Nairobi Chapel Lavington, right? So it's really great to be here amongst you guys. Guys, hey, we are starting a new series, right? But my friends, as everyone has said here, what a year it's been, eh? What a year. I mean, just the fact that you're seated here is such a miracle. My goodness, in just the past month alone, I've lost four close people to COVID. My goodness. And here we are. And so today we're starting a series called Serikali Mpia. Those who don't speak Swahili, it's new governments, eh? The ones over there online who are watching, right? But my first question to you is this, even as we start this, about Serikali Mpia, which was mentioned by uh, the, the, the MC over here, right? How many of us genuinely feel like we need Serikali Mpia? Hey, me, I'm telling you. <laughs> me personally, <laughs> personally, I'm just like, eh, we need, uh, we need to know touch Serikali Mpia. I mean, literally, for the longest time in this country, our politics has been our soap opera. Eh? Our telenovela has always been our siasa. Isn't that true? There's, not, there's no more drama that we see than we do in politics. That even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of the most dramatic year, there is still room for the greatest soap opera of our Kenyan existence, which is Siasa. You know, the other day, literally the day before yesterday, I was at a funeral service for a good friend of mine who lost his father. Um, and it was such a beautiful service. This guy was a great man. And there were all these people who were giving these incredible tributes. And one of the things is that he had a friend, one of his closest friends, closest friends, that he used to meet with every Sunday. Um, he's also a government official. Um, and he comes up on stage and begins to give this tribute about this great man and five minutes in, he starts to talk about BBI. I was just like, my gosh, I was so angry. I'm like, my guy, <laughs> Sai, this is when you want to do this. You know what I mean? We are constantly, us as Kenyans, if there's anything we know about Seraka, eh? taking us for idiots. <laughs> We are those ones, right? And for us, we feel as though it's time, even us, we want a new government. Now, this is, this paints the context for Isaiah 9, which I want us to read real quick, okay? Because Isaiah 9 is talking about a government that all of us want. A government of peace. A government of righteousness. A government of justice. Isn't that what we want? So let's read Isaiah 9. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. 
Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For, uh, for to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Now let me give some very important context around this story, okay? Around this prophecy that is being given by Isaiah. At this point in time, this message is to the southern kingdom of Israel, which is Judah. At this point in time, there's Israel and there's Judah. They have split and they have different kings. And this is before the Babylonian exile, right? But the thing that was happening here, that this was a very, very, very jittering time for the land of Judah. Their enemies to the north, the Assyrians, were an impending threat to their security. An impending threat to their security. And so Ahaz, who is the king of Judah at this point in time, is afraid to his core of the Assyrians who are growing in power. And it's just a matter of time before they come and attack Judah. And so the people of Judah are wondering, is God with us? We have this impending threat that's about to happen. Is God with us? What's going to happen? So there's a lot of jitteriness. Even the guys who are there, they're, they're looking at the king and they're like, Mega, even our king is, is scared, right? And so these are jittery times for the people of Judah, right? There was a real physical threat that was in front of them. And so when Isaiah comes with this prophecy, I can assure you that these people, when they saw this prophecy, they were thinking, this must be about the Assyrians, right? And they're like, Okay, okay. A son is born. Are they talking about Hezekiah? He has a son, right? So it must be Hezekiah, right? Is this a message about our current situation? There's an impending threat around us. And so, the thing is this, is that we realize later <laughs> that this wasn't the case. In fact, if you think about it, is that it's kind of similar to the kind of situation that we're in right now, right? Because imagine, we have an election in 2022, right? So a great prophet of God comes and he says that there is a leader who is coming and there will be righteousness and justice and of his kingdom there will be no end. His government, there will be no end. would be like 2022, right? <laughs> right? You'd be thinking, I wonder if he's talking about, uh, is he talking about, do you get what I'm saying? This is what was happening with this guy. So when they hear this prophetic word, they're thinking, my guy, this has to be about the situation because of the situation they were currently in. Unfortunately, we realize that this story and this prophecy was accomplished hundreds of years later. Hundreds. This was nothing to do with them. In fact, unfortunately, the people went into exile. In fact, the enemy that they were fearing, the Assyrians, it's the Babylonians who came <laughs> and took them to exile. Are we together? And so the thing is, what we realize now later, and we obviously have the benefit of being able to recognize at this time what that was about. They didn't know this, but what this was about was the message of a savior called Jesus Christ. And we see this prophecy come to pass many hundreds of years later where the Messiah comes Right? Where the Messiah comes, and in Matthew, it talks of this Messiah. But before, before we read what it says about this Messiah who comes hundreds of years later to fulfill this prophecy, I want just to define for you very quickly the dictionary definition of what a government is. Serkai. It says that a government is the group of people with the authority to govern a state. Are we together? A group of people with the authority to govern a state. And so, these hundreds of years later, a son is born. 
a great light appears on the sea. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he comes with a message. And the message of his government is this. That the kingdom of God has come. That the kingdom of God has come near. Serkan imefika. Are we together? Now here is the thing. In fact, let me read it from Matthew 4, 13 to 17. It says, this is now of Jesus. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, from that time on, Jesus began to preach. Repent, turn around, turn around. Turn around, for the kingdom, the Serkan, has come near. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And so what Matthew is doing here is he's literally quoting what we just read in Isaiah 9. But here's the thing that's so interesting. The thing that's also interesting is, is that the people in Jesus' time as well were under Roman occupation. The Roman Empire was the one that was ruling at the time. And so when Jesus comes with a message of a government, of a kingdom, the kingdom, and they know the reference to Isaiah, these guys are probably also the same way. Not probably. It shows you in the scripture that they were thinking of the Roman Empire. Ah, this guy has come to Chomoa, those guys. The Roman Empire. In fact, it says, there's a story you know the story of where Jesus feeds the 5,000, right? In that story, it says that after this guy saw what Jesus did, this guy has fed 5,000, they're like, this is the guy! This is the guy in Isaiah 9. And so it says that they were trying to force him to become king. Right? And what Jesus had to do is that Jesus had to go and hide from these guys. It goes on to show you see, even after, with the Pharisees coming to ask Jesus, the Pharisees who were the teachers of the law, and they're coming to ask Jesus, by the way, let me ask you, Jesus, when is this kingdom coming? Because may I still see the Romans, bro? Where is the fire from heaven to Chomoa, these guys? Right? And so the thing is, is that the people in Jesus' time were no different from the people of Judah. The people of Judah are looking at the Assyrians, and when they hear this prophecy, they're thinking, this government is coming to overthrow this government. And then the people in Jesus' time are like, if you're the guy, then that means you're coming to overthrow this government, the Roman Empire. Are we together? Ah. But here's the thing. And I want you to understand why I'm sharing with you this context. What is the purpose of all this? is that the thing that is so interesting is that these people misunderstood the message of this government, the message of this kingdom. This government was not coming to overthrow their physical governments. This government was coming to overthrow the governments and kingdoms in our hearts. They were looking for a Messiah that was coming to remove Serkan. But this kingdom was coming to remove the Serkali in your heart. The kingdoms in your heart. The governments in your heart. Ha! Luke 17 20 says, Once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God will come, Jesus replied, the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. Nor will people say, here it is, there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. Remember what we defined as the government, the group of people with authority to govern a country or state. In the case of the government of Jesus Christ, Jesus 
is coming to have the authority to govern that which belongs to him, which is us. Jesus came to reclaim that which belongs to him. We belong to him. And here is the thing. Unfortunately, we are guilty of the greatest of sins. We live under such a great deception and illusion of control that we have so believed and determined that we are in control that we have decided that we can govern ourselves. The kingdom of God is where God governs. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. The kingdom of God is where God governs. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. But the thing that has happened is this, is that we have developed our own way of doing things. We have built our own governments. We have built our own kingdoms. And we have basically structured a life where we think we have so much control. And so what we do is that we live our lives based on my goals, my ambitions, my dreams, my desires, my plans, my thoughts. And then, and this is for the believer, right? What we do is, we go to God with my plans, my ideas, my thoughts, my goals, and then we say to him, kindly sign on the dotted line and approve my plans, my goals, my ambitions. This is where I want to be when I'm 25. I want to be able to nini. Then when I'm 30, these are my goals, my ambitions. After that, in five years, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to have and then after in 2021, my goals for 2021, my, 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 my goals, my kingdom, my government, that we have become and lived in such an illusion of control. <laughs> and then even, that's for the believer. For the unbeliever, they're just like, you know what, God, I, I don't need God. I can govern myself. I can do things on my own. I can pursue my own goals, ambitions, and strategies. And it will all work out. If you just believe in yourself, it will all work out. Manifest my vision board. But the thing that we don't realize is that we were never created to build our own kingdoms. We were created to be an extension of God's kingdom. We were not created to do things our way. We were created to do things God's way because we are an extension of him. But the thing that happened from the time of Adam and Eve is that we were deceived into declaring independence that through the enemy who is the author of rebellion who went solo and independent, came to us and deceived us into staging a coup. And we took over the reins of that which belongs to him, which is our hearts, our bodies, our minds, our souls, our worship. All this belong to him. But the thing that we have done and the thing that has happened is that in every sense of the world, we have built this world and we have See, we see this world where we worship, we worship worldly accolades that have no eternal significance. We are told to leave a legacy here on earth, which most times has no significance for eternity. And so what we do is that we celebrate all these earthly feats. This guy is a billionaire. Man, he's a billionaire. Yeah. Built Facebook. Built Apple. Oh, the greatness of his kingdom. And he's dead. 
I was watching just yesterday about the last words that Steve Jobs spoke, where he was just like on his deathbed and wondering what was all this for. And so the thing that we have done is that we have built a life and believed this illusion and believed this deception that what we see in this world is everything. And so we build our own kingdoms and we spend our lives chasing earthly goals that we have developed for ourselves that have no eternal significance. We chase things that have no life. And so what happens is this, is that in this dire situation, a son is born and the government shall be on his shoulders. And he comes with a message of his kingdom, of his government that has no end. He comes with a message of a kingdom whose promise is eternal life. One of the things that I have been doing, like I told you, a series on the kingdom of God. I have always thought that eternal life just meant living forever. Right? I don't know about you, but that's how I've always seen it. It's like after this, after we finish living here, we continue living forever, right? But the word life that's used in the scriptures is the word zoe. And what zoe is, is that zoe doesn't just speak of life in terms of breath. It speaks of vitality. It speaks of progress. It speaks of fruitfulness. And so what the kingdom is promising us, it's not something that's coming later. It's talking about eternal life, eternal progress, eternal vitality. You know like the same way when you look at someone and you say, man, that guy is so full of life. That's the way. And the promise of doing things God's way, the promise of those who live under God's authority is eternal the way. Eternal progress, eternal fruitfulness, eternal vitality. This is the promise of that kingdom. This is the promise where Jesus says to us that he who has the Son, it's not something that's coming, has eternal life, has eternal progress, has eternal vitality. Every week you get better. Every month you get better. Every year you get better. In spite of whatever is around you, you have eternal Zoe. And this is the promise of the kingdom. This is the promise of his government. That a life governed by him, that a life that does things his way, experiences eternal Zoe. My friends, this week I realized that 2020 is a great gift from our Heavenly Father. An amazing gift. I remember many years ago I was headed to uh, my, my friend's uh, dad had passed away. And so I was headed to the funeral service with another friend of mine. We were together in the car. And uh, this guy says to me, he's like, hey, my guy, isn't it crazy how little control we have. And I remember being like, yeah, 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 bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in my head, I'm like, for you, man. I'm like, me, on the other hand, I know Jesus. <laughs> Anything I ask, I receive. Proclaim it. Speak it. <laughs> it shall come. I'm like, homie, I got control, man. I know Jesus. And so the thing is, <laughs> All those many years ago, God kept trying to show me, my guy, you're not in control. I'm in control. But I would be there like, yeah. And it was evident in my life because kwa roho yangu kulikuwa na serikali ya nusumkate. Yeah? I'm like, the Lord will come and speak to me and I'd be like, great suggestion. Great. But I'm going to just do things my way. 
there, there are some really nice things I like about what you're saying. I like that stuff. Definitely. Nusumkata, that one, we'll do that. This other side, I'm a holler at you. Yeah? We'll see, we'll see. And so for me, it was one of those things where I literally thought I was in the driver's seat. And all the while, God is there showing me, telling me, my guy, <laughs> please, <laughs> I need you to know that you're not in control. And then, March 13th happened. March 13th is a day that I'll never forget because it's the day COVID happened. Or rather, it was the day that the government closed down everything. My friends, my business ground to a halt. Let me just give you some context. In this business, eh? Chichi the knows we work in the same office. In this business, we were headed for the stars. This was our year. In December of last year, we had just been accepted into the NSC, the Nairobi Securities Exchange Ibuka program. We were on the roadmap to being able to list on the boss within 18 to 24 months. We were taking off. We had just opened up two new markets in 2019 that were doing amazing. I was just like, my goodness, the year was starting off so well. I remember telling one of my colleagues, this is our year. And I remember sitting and telling the team, this year we're going to have to work harder than we've ever worked before. Because, man, everything is opening up. And in one moment, not in a couple of months, in one day, God showed me who's in control. My friends, in that one moment, in that one day, everything came tumbling down like the Tower of Babel to remind me and to remind us who is in control. God plunged me into a wilderness that I had never known before to humble me and to remind me who runs the show. I need you to remember something from Deuteronomy 8 and also from the story of Jesus that God is the one who led them through the wilderness. This was not a mistake. This was purposeful. And the gift that has been given to us this year is a reminder that we are living under the illusion of control. How many people here were planning their lives with a pandemic in mind, with all your risk assessments of your business, which line was there that said, in the case of a pandemic, <laughs> this is what we will do, <laughs> right? And here's the thing. If someone came and told me the year before, that Thimba, you're not gonna earn a salary for a whole year. For a whole year, you're not gonna earn a salary. I'd have been like, so like, am I dead? <laughs> Why am I not earning a salary? <laughs> What's supposed to happen? <laughs> Why? Why? My friends, let me tell you something. This whole year from that time, the Lord, as I stand here, my landlord is not owed any man. We've been late many months. <laughs> I can assure you of that. <laughs> Michelle. But the grace that he's given me, and at this point as I stand here, I don't owe that guy anything. As I stand here, I have been eating every single day. As I stand here, in fact, even during this period, I got a wardrobe makeover for free. For free. All this with no income. And I stand here and I ask, and God is asking us, who is in control? Who is your God? And he did this for the Israelites. He did this for Jesus. And he is doing it for us today. My friends, I'll tell you what. God is in control. There is no government in Usunkate. God is in control. And so the thing that we have, and as I close these two things that I want to the, the, the options of two things that we have been given today. This is the gift of the moment that we have right now. This is the gift of the moment that we're in right now, in this season, in a year like this. This is the gift. We have two options. I feel like uh, anyone who's watched The Matrix, I'm like Morpheus. 
there's the red pill or there's the blue pill. Do you remember that? The blue pill is, take this thing, continue to live in the illusion of control. Continue to think that this life is about your plants, your, your things. Or you continue to live under the illusion of control that we have been demonstrated to that does not exist, that we are not in control. So you can continue to go back into the matrix and live in the illusion that my plans will bring me life, that my agendas will bring me life. That's okay. But then there's also the red pill. What the red pill is, is that we recognize that we are at a moment that God is calling us to submit our lives to him fully. Sio serikali ya nusumkate. Fully. That when we recognize that he is in control, that instead we will seek his plans for our lives. We will seek his goals for our lives. We will seek his ambitions for our lives and that we will commit ourselves that instead of doing things our way, that we will do things God's way. My friends, today as I tell you about this kingdom, the kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. And I think for me, I've reached a place where I have been, I've seen the practical of God demonstrating to me that my plants mean nothing. The man planted in his field and that seed grew and became a big tree that the birds would come and nest on. What I'm trying to say to you today is this. At this very moment as you are listening to me speaking to you and as you're hearing the sound of my voice, God is speaking to you and God is saying something to you. He's saying either, could be, He's asking you to let go of something or to do something. The kingdom of God is like a seed. How we submit ourselves today is by doing the thing that God is asking us to do today. Don't worry about tomorrow. The kingdom of God is like a seed that a man planted in his field. And then tomorrow, when he asks you to do something, you do it. And then the next day, when he asks you to do something, you do it. The kingdom of God is like a seed. And what this Serekali is coming to say to us is that today we are rejecting our kingdoms. Today we are rejecting our way. And whatever it is that God is saying to you right now, at this very moment, do it. The wise man, the one, the story of the hearts, the wise heart is the one who hears the word, understands it, and does it. Do not reject God's word to you today. Reject your kingdom. It is taking you nowhere. And do things God's way. So whatever God is saying to you at this very moment, do it. Amen? That's where we start. Next week, we're going to continue this series. And we're going to talk about the king. But today, my imploration to you is this. You're not in control. And don't worry about the big things. Submit your life. Submit yourself to that instruction that God is giving to you right now. Amen? Pastor Judy, Neza Kujo to Fungia. My friends, a new government has come that we can either choose to submit to or we can ignore and continue to live under the illusion of control. That process of submission begins today. The kingdom of God is like a seed. Trust that whatever God is saying to you, no matter how crazy or how difficult it is, I assure you, it's 
going to give you life. It's going to bring you progress. It's going to bring you fruitfulness. Whatever that decision is, it's going to give you eternal life. And so today, obey the voice of the Lord in just that one instruction that he's giving you right now.